Hi, I'm Sesh Venigopal. This is the second part of how to write a Java application with linked lists without using a linked list object. In the first part, we saw how to write a method to add a movie to the front of a linked list. At the end, I suggested that we could shrink the code in the method down to a single line. So let's take it out from that point and add a couple more features to the movies application to make it complete. I hope you just recently watched the first part so it's still fresh in your mind. If not, you may want to review it before going on. Here's what we have in the movies application so far. An add to front method to add a new movie to the front of a linked list. We're not using a linked list object. Instead, we're sending the front pointer to methods that need to work with a linked list and returning the front pointer from any of the methods that update it. Which brings us to the next thing we want to do, and that is to write a method to delete the first movie in the linked list. Recall that when we are ready to watch a movie, we pick the one at the front of the list and remove it from the list. As we did with the add to front implementation, let's first visualize the process in pictures so we get a good grasp of the logic, including special cases, if any. When we delete the first node, we want to do this, which is to redirect front so it skips the first node and points instead to the second node. After this redirection, you will have front pointing to the second node. But what happens to the first? This is what the whole thing looks like. The first node is still there, but it can be reached since there is nothing pointing to it. And if an object can't be reached, it is as good as not there. At some point, it is found and recycled as available memory. This process of finding unreachable objects and recycling them is called garbage collection and is performed by a program called the garbage collector that constantly runs in the background. As far as we're concerned, this is the picture at the end of the delete. When we designed the logic for the add to front method, we verified that it worked even when a movie was added to an empty linked list. What happens if we delete from an empty linked list? Well, it really shouldn't be allowed, right? Deleting from an empty linked list has no meaning because there is nothing to delete. There is another special case, and that is when there is only one movie in the linked list. When it is deleted, the list becomes empty, so front should become null. OK, we've covered all bases. It's time to implement. All right, here it goes. So just as we did with add front, add to front, we're going to find delete front but this time we're just going to accept one parameter we only need the front of the linked list and we will return front dot next now up in the main program or the main method let's add in a line or two to call our delete front method and print the front and save. So does this implementation work when there is a single node in the linked list? Well, here's a picture of what we want to see. In the code front.next will be set to null. So null will be returned and in the main method front is then set to null which is exactly as it should be. Alright, let's run this program and see if it works correctly. What I want to do is to add two movies first and then delete both of them. So back up in the main program I'll ask for a movie and I'll add that but after I add that movie let me ask for another movie name then add that as well and print the front. So now we have enter movie name, read that at the front, print the front, enter another movie name. Uh, we need to take out the type name here since we've already defined movie earlier. And then add that to front, print it, and then we'll delete the front, which will delete the first thing in the linked list. And that will leave one movie in the list and I want to 
delete that as well. Okay, save it. All right, let's run it now. Okay, enter movie name. So the first movie I want to enter is Die Another Day, which is printed. Add another movie name, Golden Eye. That's, you can see there's Golden Eye that was printed, and then we said print front, which prints die another day, and then the other movies deleted, and then the front will be null. Again, after we entered the second movie named Golden Eye, we were here in the code, it was read, was added to the front of the list, and the front printed Golden Eye, and then we deleted the front, which left die another day, that was printed out. And then we deleted the front again, which left nothing in the list, and it printed null. So it's working correctly so far. Now, if we call delete front a third time, it will be on an empty link list. What do you think will be the output? You may want to pause here a bit while you run it over in your head. Alright, let's run the program and find out. So here, let's call delete front one more time and we know that we're going to be sending in a null pointer for front and let's print the front that comes back okay let's run this I'll die another day golden eye wow the program crashed. Okay, so we see that there's a null pointer exception that was thrown, and you probably saw that coming, right? Because right here, front is null, and then when you do null dot anything, it's going to give you a null pointer exception. So that's basically what happened. Okay, so the case of front being null needs special handling. But one thing we could do is to check for it in our code and do nothing if it happens. So we could do something like this. We could say, well, only return front.next if front is not equal to null. Otherwise, we can just return the front that came into the program. The solution will work in the sense that it saves the program from crashing, but it does not dissuade the calling program from doing it repeatedly, which is not a big deal, but it's highly likely that the programmer might be doing this without realizing it and would appreciate being told. So the better option is to throw an exception. So in the program, you can change this to first check if front is null, and if it is, then throw a new no such element exception. Now this error message basically tells us that it cannot be resolved with type and that's because this is in a different package. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my shortcut which is command shift o on the Mac to have it automatically import Java util no such element exception for me. On Windows the shortcut is Control Shift O. It's a fairly standard exception that is thrown whenever an attempt is made to delete an item from a collection such as a link list that is empty. If that exception is not thrown, control flows through here and here I will in fact bypass the first node and return front.next. So now when the method is called the null value for front, it will throw an exception and terminate without going through the rest of the code. At the calling end, or I guess the receiving end in this case, the main method can catch the exception and do whatever is needed. Back to the main method and 
place the delete calls inside a try catch block. Before that, I'm going to add a little bit to the output so it's easy to read. So here, we ask the user to enter a movie name, the NRSA die another day, and we add it. And here, I just want to say a little bit more so it's easy to know what actually happened. So we say added front, and I want to do the same thing here, added uh, front. Um, after the deletes, we're printing what's left in the list, so I want to say list is that, um, or I could say deleted the movie that was in the front, but that's going to be a little harder, so just let's stay with this list is that. And all the deletes are going to be in a try catch block. So any one of these delete calls could result in a no such element exception. So the catch block is going to trap that exception, and we can print any message we want here. I'm going to say um, try to delete in an empty delete list. So now let's run this program and see what happens. Enter the name. Try another day. Add it down another day. Enter another movie name. Golden Eye. Add a Golden Eye. Then we deleted the front, which was Golden Eye, which left Die Another Day in the link list, which was deleted, left null, and the third attempt was made to delete on an empty link list. And we got the exception back. We caught the exception and printed this out. So everything is working just the way we want it to. And that's pretty much it for part two. I hope you got a good idea of how to write non-object-oriented code with static methods by passing in the front of the linked parameter. Catch you later.